Hey, it's Joe from JoeCalantonio.com. In the last video, we went over why I think API testing is so important. In this video, I'm going to show you how a tool like HP's UFT API can help you do all types of API testing. So there are three main demos we're going to go over in this video. The first one is how to interact with the web service. The second one is to pass data between a web service and other activities on the Canvas area within UFT API. And the third one is how to test a REST service. So check it out. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into UFT API. If you have experience with Quick Test Professional, it's the same tool. Basically, from 11.5 and up, HP has rebranded their tool from QTP to be Unified and Functional Testing. So before they had a separate tool for functional testing called Quick Test Professional, and they had a separate tool for service testing called service test. What they did with 11.5 is they created a brand new IDE where both these tools now live. So what used to be called QTP is now called UFT GUI. And what used to be called service test is now called UFT API. And let's create a new test. And so that's going to be the first choice we have, whether we want to create a GUI test, which used to be QTP, or create an API test, which used to be called service test. So we're gonna create an API test. So there are four main areas of the user interface that you need to be aware of. On the left-hand side is the toolbox area. This is where all the different types of activities that you can perform within UFT API will be located. In the middle, we have the canvas area. So this is the main canvas area. This is where you take an activity from the toolbox and you drag it into your test flow. And you can create all kinds of different test flows. There's an activity where you can do an if so you can create all kinds of different test flows. So what you would do is you would grab the type of activity you'd like to perform and just drag it onto the canvas area in order to work with it. So once you have an activity on your canvas area, on the right-hand side, all activities have properties. And so you would click on the activity on the canvas area. And on the right-hand side, under properties, would be all the different types of properties that are available to you for that particular activity. And at the bottom, the main area you need to be aware of is this data area. This is where you would data drive a test, which I have an example of. Okay, so now let's try testing a web service. So I'm going to click on this Import WSDL and select Import WSDL from URL. So I'm going to use a web service called GeoIP service that allows you to, based on an IP address, tells you the location of that particular machine. So I'm going to import the WSDL. And anytime you import something into UFT API, it will put it under your toolbox area. So if you look under your toolbox, there's an area called local activities. You can see we now have a web service. So it lists all the different types of operations you can perform against that web service. So I'm going to grab the get GeoIP and I'm going to drag it onto the main canvas area. So I'm going to click on that get GeoIP activity. And on the right hand side, I'm going to start setting some of my properties. Notice how UFT API has automatically read in the WSDL and knows automatically what type of inputs and outputs are expected for this particular web service. Basically, it just wants an IP address. So I'm going to enter in an IP address of a machine. So let's run the test and see what happens. So I'm just going to click on the Run button. Take the defaults and click on Run. Cool. So if you're familiar with Quick Test Professional, it'll bring up the same HP run result viewer that you're already familiar with. So I'm just going to expand this test flow, do an expand all, and click on this get GeoIP. If you scroll down, you'll notice there's a request area and a response area. Notice that these are links. So if you had a very long response returning back to you from a, a really complicated web service, if you click on this response link, it'll bring the response up in a separate window, which makes it e easier to read. So if we look at the response, notice how one of the values returned to us is the country name. And this IP address, basically, it's telling us that it found this IP address and that this particular server lives within China. Cool. So what you always want to do with any type of test is you want to validate that the response that you get back from your request is what you expect. So in UFT API, that's called a checkpoint. So underneath the properties section for the get GeoIP activity, notice there's a checkpoint section here. 
This allows you to do pretty much any type of check that you could possibly think of. So I'm gonna to go to country name, click on the validate checkbox, and notice to the right of this, now this equal sign, there's multiple options. So you can say, does it equal, does it not equal, is it greater than, less than, starts with, ends, contains. You can even do a regex expression. If you have a complex request and you wanna really drill down more within the elements that are returned, you can even create a custom XPath. So you can create a custom XPath checkpoint that you can tell it exactly what elements you wanna verify and validate that the value returned to you is the one that you expect. Right now, we're just gonna do a simple checkpoint that doesn't equal, and we're gonna make sure it equals the value China. So let's run the test one more time and see what that looks like. Let's expand the results one more time. And now let's look at the checkpoint and notice that it goes, and notice that it actually checked to see if the value China was returned under country name. So it expected the value China and it actually return the value China so it passes. So another important feature of UFT API is that you can pass values between any activity that's in your test flow. So I'm gonna show you a simple example of how to do this. So underneath the toolbox, I'm just gonna to navigate to the string manipulation section and I'm going to grab this concatenation strings. So I'm gonna click on the concatenation string activity so for the prefix, I'm gonna write hi, I'm from. And for the suffix, I wanna to point to the value that's returned to us from the web service. So I'm gonna click on suffix. Notice when you do this on the right, there's a link here. This is a link to data source. So this link will allow you to point to another activity's inputs or outputs. So I'm gonna click on this link. And I'm gonna link from available steps. And notice I have my get GOIP web service. So I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna expand the output and I'm gonna to navigate to this country name. So now, now notice there's a link between this value and the value within the get geo. Notice on the main canvas area, it shows relationships between activities with a arrow. So next I'm gonna to go to my miscellaneous. I'm gonna to go to the report message, drag this onto my activity area. I'm gonna make this pass. And once again, for the message, I'm gonna click on this link to data source. And for the link to data source, I'm gonna to point to the concatenation string activity. And I just wanna select the result of that. So let's run the test and see what happens. Let's take a look at the report message. And notice now that it says the message is, hi, I'm from China, that it actually went out and it grabbed the output of the web service for the country name and it put it into this and we were able to use it and we were now able to use it within another activity. That's how easy it is to pass data between different activities within UFT API. So now let's check out how easy it is to data drive this test. So say we want to verify 50 country names with 50 IP addresses. And it's as simple as we'll click on our get GOIP activity We'll go underneath properties again. And underneath properties, if an activity can be data-driven, there'll be this other icon called data drive entire steps. So it'll look like a database with a link. So we're gonna click on this link and the data drive window comes up and you can specify if you want to data drive from an Excel sheet or an XML sheet. You can also specify if you just wanna data drive the input or output, we're gonna use both. And also we're just gonna tell it that we want it to use, create a for loop for us automatically. So basically if we have 50 records within our spreadsheet, it's gonna iterate 50 times. Okay, so notice it automatically now creates two spreadsheets for us. The first one is the input, so it's gonna be our IP address. And the second one is the value that we want to validate. So this is our checkpoint spreadsheet. So I'm just gonna go into the input, I'm gonna add two more IP addresses. And now I'm gonna go into the checkpoints and add what the expected value should be for each of those IP addresses. So the first one we know is gonna be China. So we're gonna save this and run the test again. Awesome, it passed. So if we expand our test flow again, notice how we now have three iterations. And so it iterated through each of our records. And if we look at the report message, the first one is, hi, I'm from China. The second one says, hi, I'm from the United States. 
And the third one says, hi, I'm from Egypt. That's how easy it is to data drive. So another feature I'm really excited about within UFT API is the ability to create custom code using C Sharp. With UFT API, you can type in pretty much straight C Sharp code. And if there's not functionality available to you out of the box within UFT API, you can pretty much create any type of functionality you might need if it's not available out of the box with UFT API. So let's take a quick look on how we would create some custom functionality for this particular test. So if you click on an activity and notice that it has a Thunderbolt icon, this is the events tab. If you click on events, this is where you can add custom code for that particular activity. So I'm going to click on the get GOIP. I'm going to go to its events section. And just before it executes, I'm just going to click on create a default handler. So if you're familiar with Visual Studio, this is the same type of view you would see within Visual Studio. It has a telesense. It's important to know this is not Visual Studio, but it has the same type of activities, the same type of functionality you would get out of Visual Studio. And basically the same type of C Sharp you could use within Visual Studio, pretty much you can create also within UFT API. So right in, so in here, I have an activity. What I want to do is I want to grab the location of this test script, where it lives on my hard drive, and I want to write that out to my report message. So for this example, I'm just going to create a simple string called my count, and I'm going to make it equal the service call activity dot local storage path. So notice all the different types of options you have. The one downside to FT API is a lot of this is not documented. So it may take you a little bit in order to get the functionality you need, but once you get it, you're golden. So for this one, I just want to use the local storage path. And what I want to do is take that my count value and I want to place it within my report message that I have on my activity area. So notice this name is report message activity 10. So I'm going to go back to the code view and I'm going to type in report. And notice the IntelliSense automatically picks up matches for you. So this is the activity I want to interact with. And notice it has a message. I'm going to click on message. And I'm going to make that message equal. Actually, let's call this my path. That makes more, more sense than my count. And so now I'm going to make this message equal the value that's returned to us from my path. Make sure you save all before you run any custom code. And this will show you, notice under errors, it shows you any type of error you may have. So this is just showing that I have a unexpected value here. So it's an equal sign that shouldn't be there. Save it again. Look at the errors, everything's clean, no warnings, no errors. So let's run it and see what happens. Awesome, so notice it passed. Let's look at the results again. So let's look at the report message again. And notice now, rather than saying, hi, I'm from, it overwrites it automatically with the custom code we just created. And in the place of, hi, I'm from, the name of the country, it's writing out the location of where our script is saved locally. Cool, now for the last example, I wanna show how easy it is now to interact with the REST service using UFT API. If people, people that know me know I'm a bibliomaniac, I love books, so I'm gonna use my favorite REST service by Google called Google Books. So if we go to Google Books and we scroll down, it shows us what type of operations are available within the Google API. And it also shows us a example of what a request looks like. So I'm just gonna copy this request. So the first thing you want to do is you want to click on this Add REST Service option. And under Add REST Service, I'm just going to call this Google Books. And under the resource, I'm going to call Search. And for my method, I'm going to call it Find Name. So you could either add all your values here within this Add REST Service window, and you can run it to debug. But I'm just going to click on OK, and I'm going to set the values directly 
um, underneath the properties. I just find that easier sometimes. Once again, notice how the REST service is pulled in underneath your local activities. And we have the Google REST API that we just modeled. So I'm gonna get this fine name. I'm gonna drag it onto the canvas area. And for the URL, I'm just gonna add in the URL we grabbed from the Google website. And so I'm gonna query the books. So it's gonna go into Google and search books that have any reference to the term touring. Let's run it. Notice how we have a response body. Let's click on the response body link. And notice it returns a bunch of results for us, all for all matches that match the term touring. So that's it for my examples. If you want to learn more, I wrote the go-to resource for UFT API called the UFT API Testing Manifesto, a step-by-step, hands-on testing guide for the masses. So in this book, I basically cover every single activity available to you within UFT API with some simple hands-on examples. I just released version two of the UFT API Manifesto so in this version, I added three more chapters called BBT, Performance Testing, and Debugging. So if you find this video helpful, subscribe to my YouTube channel or head on over to joecolantonio.com and sign up for my free monthly newsletter. Hope it helps.